Xamarin Form Styles. That's it. That's the intro. To show you how styles work, I have created this um, file new Xamarin project app. So this is just the default template that comes out of the box. Um, and we're going to style some things here. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to show you this in XAML, but all you can do in XAML, uh, you can do in C sharp as well. I'm not going to show you that. Uh, please refer to the docs on how to do that, or you can probably figure it out yourself. Uh, but I'm going to show you in XAML. So I'm going to do that here in this page. And in this content page, I can do content page dot resources. Um, I have another video on um, resources and resource uh, dictionaries. So go check that out. It should pop up on your screen and it's down in the comments for this video. Um, and I'm going to add a style in here. So um, when we do, we have a couple of properties that you can use. Um, I'm going to go through most of these. And uh, the most important thing right now is going to be the target type. Um, with which you are going to specify um, with what is going to be the target type of this style. So you can see all the views are popping up here. So you can create a style for an image, a label, an entry, uh, you name it for a, a full page if that's what you want. Uh, for now, I'm going to stick with the label and I'm going to close the style here. So and inside of this style, um, I can then uh, define setters. So this setter and with the setter, we have another couple of properties, which is the property, the target name um, and the value. Um, so for the property, we can use the actual property that is a property on the um, target type. So in this case, on the label, um, if this were a button, then you would get all the properties for a button and uh, for a page and so on and so on. So for a label, we can just set the uh, text color, for instance. So let's just do that. And then we also can specify a value. Um, so let's make that red because that's always uh, good for the obviousness of things. So right now what I'm saying here, I say, hey, we have a style which is going to apply to labels. And on that label, the text color is going to be of the value red. Um, so I already saved it. And you can see that um, all my labels are now red. Um, so this is um, XAML hot reload. It reloaded the page while I was running. And you can see that all the labels are now um, turning red. So except for this one, this one at the top, which is a label two, you can see it here. Um, but you can see the text color is specified on this actual label, which is white. So if I would to, uh, to remove this one and save it again, you can see this is red as well. Um, so if you override the value on uh, the actual label itself, um, then um, yeah, that will uh, apply that value to it instead of the one that's set in this style. So as you can see also in the previous video on resource dictionaries, this kinds of um, cascades. So I can also say um, here stack layout dot resources. And if I were to uh, set a style in here as well, um, then I can set the text color to, I don't know, yellow. And then I have to remove this white again, else it will be updated. So, um, oh, now actually, because everything is in this stack layout, so uh, this is on the page level, this is on the stack layout. So everything in this stack layout is now overridden here, this yellow um, from this red, and it will turn yellow instead of red. Um, if I had done it in this frame inside of here, then it would only apply to this one here at the top. So you can see it cascades nicely. Um, and this is what they call, I'm going to uh, undo a couple of things here. So not the stack layout resources. I'm going to remove that one again. Um, so this is what they call implicit styles because um, it implicitly styles all the labels uh, without having to do anything. So with this, you can um, very easily just um, style all the labels in your application because you can also go to your solution, um, the shared project, and go to your app XAML and specify them here in your application resources. Then it will be true for uh, your whole application and all the labels in your application um, will become red. So if we go back to the main page, and um, one other thing I want to show you is the explicit styles. So with explicit styles, you can uh, specify a key here. 
and this is going to be our label style and whenever I save that you will see that everything goes back to normal uh, because this is now an explicit style so you still have to say hey I want to apply this to a label but now you have to specifically say on that label that you want to use um, this style so the label style so if I copy this one and I go to this top label here which says start developing now and I'm going to say uh, style which is a property on um, all of the visual elements and I can say static resource because it's in the resources um, and you can see the IntelliSense popping up and it knows that it applies to a label so it's going to suggest me the label style I'm going to choose that one um, save it and you can see it only applies now to that label um, so with this you can define certain um, uh, types of labels maybe and you can apply um, all those styles to the different labels or controls that you um, might have in place. Um, so you can do multiple setters so you can also do um, I'm going to copy and paste this line you can also set the uh, background color and set that to yellow to make our design complete and when I save that you can see it now also is um, yellow so um, you can set basically all the properties of your control that you um, would normally set directly on that control but now it makes this style reusable um, and your example much less verbose so that's very cool now one thing that is good to know um, you also have on the style a property that says apply to derived types um, so that means whenever I inherit from the label and I create my own label um, does it does this style also apply to uh, the label that inherits from it so let's quickly have a look at that I'm going to have to write some code so I will stop the application right now I'm going to go to my solution and in my shared project I'm going to add a new class uh, that doesn't really do anything exciting I'll call it my label or my custom label that's that's a much better name my custom label and um, I'm going to let that inherit from label which is in um, the Xamarin forms library so let's add the Xamarin forms here um, and now I have a certain type of label so when I save this and I go back to my main page XAML um, I should be able to specify this um, so I'm gonna go back well actually let me just copy this style right here and make it an implicit style here I'll add the comments for when you review this code um, explicit style there we go and here we're going to add the implicit style and so I all I need to do is remove the key here and let's just make a little changes to these because so you can tell the difference um, so this is going to be green and no background color and so what I want to do here is uh, take this and I'm going to make this my custom label so let's see what happens then I need to import the right namespace here so I will let IntelliSense fix that uh, so what this did is um, add an extra XML NS import here that specifies the namespace of my app uh, where that custom label object lives so that's all that happened and let's run our application again so now you can see that our um, explicit style, so the one with the label style, which is the one here at line 19, that still works. Uh, red text, yellow background, all good. Um, so my custom label doesn't do anything. It's just black, which is the default. And uh, the last label here is green. So this is styled by the implicit style that you can find right here. Um, so and the thing I mentioned was uh, with the implicit style and that also uh, is by the way with the explicit style that doesn't really matter um, whenever I say now here apply to derived types and I set that to true and I save it again you can see that my custom label also becomes green so if you want to create your own inheritance of certain controls and you want to style them as well make sure to set this property to um, yeah make that style apply to all the derived types as well I'm going to remove this one for now for a little bit just to show you all the differences now one last thing I want to show you is the style inheritance so let's just add another one here uh, there we go comments um, style inheritance and I'm going to add a new style here which is going to have well there we go 
a target type of um, view. Here we go. And um, so view is basically just everything that is um, um, the visual elements are um, inherited from. So what we should be able to do now is do the setter uh, on the property and I can say like the background color for everything um, needs to be of value well let's make it Azure Azure is always good uh, so let's see if this does anything already no not yet and what I'm now going to do is create a new style that is based of that so um, style let's actually give it a key uh, which is going to be a bordered uh, button style there we go and this is um, target type button as you might have guessed and I'm also going to apply the based on so the based on is going to be um, yeah the inheritance style that I want to use as a base for this so also here this is the same way as you would apply this to um, your style on a control so I'm going to define static resource and I can say well actually I can't say anything because I didn't add the key right here so also here is going to be, be a base key uh, this is going to be base style there we go and I should be able to do that here and close it and do that okay and now I can do the setter again for the property uh, border color and um, I'm going to set that to a value of regular blue hopefully we can see that uh, there we go and now I need to add a actual button here so let's do that uh, button with a text of well let's do something random like um, did you subscribe to my YouTube channel yet well that's that's something very random uh, maybe that makes you think of something you should be doing right now um, let's let's close that button and I'm going to set the style to this um, to static resource and this is going to be the bordered style and save that so here we go you can see it has the actual background color I think the border is not visible because I didn't set a border width so let's do that set that to two and you can see that the border width now shows up as well um, in the blue color that you can see here but the really cool thing is so whenever I use this base style and background color is something that is on view um, so I can add another one here but um, uh, let's also give that a key um, and let's say I don't know um, um, the red text style uh, for the label so I'm going to do that again for a label and um, I'm again going to say based on so um, static resource and again the base style so it can can use that same base style because you know both the label and the button inherit from view so um, I can just use this background color which is uh, available on both of these and then just make the specific properties for my button like a border color that's not on a label uh, so I can I can do these things on um, specific on their separate style so that's very cool and here on a label I can set again uh, a setter with the property text color and set the value to um, I don't know let's make it something fun again what did we not have yet orange orange is always good too um, so let's do that and now oh I set it to make red well then I have to change this to orange here we go orange and let's add a new label so that the other samples will stay intact I'm going to use a new label text um, subscribe now very random again and style is static so the thing about static resources and dynamic resources I'll probably do a video on that later uh, let me know if that's something that you're interested in in the comments so static resources will not change throughout the runtime of your application and you also have dynamic resource uh, which allows you to actually uh, change the styles during runtime uh, whenever you like reload your resource dictionaries and such so if that's something you're interested in let me know in the comments and I'll record a video on that as well uh, but for now I'm just going to stick with uh, static resource and you can see the orange textile here coming up as well 
and uh, close that one, save it, and we should see uh, a label coming up with that same teal background because that was something in our base style, um, but also our orange textile, so um, our orange text is here um, as well. So that's basically um, the different ways how to go about styles and make them like really reusable and uh, organizable in your application. Uh, now this is on the page level again, so this cascades if I were to move this on the stack layout or this frame, it would only apply to the scope of this frame, um, or I could move it up and I could move it up to my app XAML and it would, um, yeah, work for this whole application. That is everything you need to know about styles, basically. There is a couple of more small things. Uh, go ch check out the documentation for that. In this video, we've seen how to use styles, how to apply them on different levels, how to um, inherit from one each other, make them usable for your inherited controls. Basically, we've learned everything there is to know about styles. There is a little bit more in the documentation, so go check that out. Um, please let me know if there's any subject that you want me to talk about. Let it know in the comments. Otherwise, like this video if you liked it, subscribe to my channel, and I'll be looking forward to teach you something in my next video.